Lexus have always been making quality cars, reliable, beautiful built quality. But throughout the Lexus lineup, there are a few models that are so good, they are like the hallmark of Lexus image or kind of the ethos of Lexus. One of them is the Lexus LS, the original one, and the LS430. They did not care what the consumers want. They gave us a car and they said, this is the best. And there are other models like that in the Lexus lineup, like the Lexus LX, the Lexus GX. These models don't get updated every three years to keep up with the latest and the greatest and all the gizmos and whatnot, nothing. The Lexus GX in 2023 still has an ancient V8. But now we have a new model that is joining that elite best of the best. Lexus models there is. This model has been out since 2018. And even though, you know, the market has been very demanding and cars need to be technologically advanced, this car still has CD player, still doesn't have a touch screen. And that model is the Lexus LC 500, specifically the 500 not the hybrid model. See, this car has been exactly the same since 2018, and now it's going into 2023. Although Lexus says, we made a few tweaks to the suspension, but that's hardly a change. We still have a CD player, we still have a non-touch screen, infotainment screen, and everything pretty much is 2018 with old technology. Because even in 2018, when this came out, it actually had old technology. And that is what Lexus excels at. Because this will make many cars that are three times more expensive look like they are cheap knockoffs of this. Folks, this is one of the Lexus greats. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you why that is. Let's get started. Let's start with the most important part that makes this one of the Lexus crates, the beating soul of this car, the engine. Let's take a look at this engine. The LC500 has a 5 liter V8, the 2UR GSE. And when you initially look at this engine, it looks like it's exclusively made for the LC500. And despite Lexus's best marketing efforts. This is actually not exclusive to the LC500. Yes, the ISF and the, all the other models and the GSF and all that, but actually even those are not exclusive. This is a UR series engine. You're going to find a variant of this engine in the, and watch which exact models they are. The LX570, the GX460, and the LS460 just like the one you see in the back. This is actually a variant of that. This is a 5 liter 32 valve V8 engine. And an engine that makes noise, bundles of noise. When you start it and you drive it, let's take a listen. That roar that you heard is a proper raw V8. No turbos, no supercharging, no really gizmos, actually old school power and noise, just proper stuff. This engine for 2018 had some technology, but by today's standards, this is becoming ancient. So this engine has dual variable valve timing. Hardly the technological advancement, does have a pretty clever variable valve timing setup on the intake. There's an electric motor that spins the speed of the camshaft. When it wants to advance the timing, it's gonna just increase the speed of that motor. Really, you're gonna find similar technology in the Camry hybrid you see behind you, which is my car, has the exact same technology as this giant roaring V8. You see where this is hardly new technology, and that's exactly the point. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this is the ethos with cars like this. They just work. This engine also uses direct injection. Not only 
user support and direct also hardly the technological advancement but they use it in a clever way here slightly different than other models because this car is actually meant to go on a track so when you're driving normally normal commutes medium to light acceleration it's going to use direct and port at the same time sometimes simultaneously sometimes one sometimes the other this helps this engine actually get great gas mileage and somebody will laugh right now but this is a giant V8 that is old school. It does not get horrendous gas mileage as much as you expect if you drive it like a hum normal human being. An emphasis on the word if. When you are driving under heavy load, you just stomped on the throttle from one traffic light to the next, it's gonna actually switch to direct injection only. This helps cool the intake and actually increase the compression of this engine. And how does it do that? When you cool the intake, you're actually going to cause denser air to come in because the air charge will be cooler and you increase the compression that way. Just like when you have an inner cooler and a turbo and all that, that creates that effect. And then something very interesting, when you have an extended high load driving, like when you're driving on the track, it's actually gonna shut off direct injection, switch to port injection, because now you have longer periods of kind of high heat, high load, and the ports, the intake ports will start to heat up. So now you need fuel directly spray on them to cool them down. Kind of an engineering trick there. You switch to port, this will cool the ports. And now you can have an extended runtime at full max power without overheating things and kind of start having detonation and pinging and all kinds of problems. This is super cool how they use the direct end port together in this engine. Somewhat similar to other models, but this really takes it to the next level because this car is properly made to go on a track and it has a lot of little stuff that you'll see throughout this video that are really track focused, something kind of unnatural for Lexus, usually in their normal day-to-day -day cars. And then let's talk about the mechanical construction. The heads are basically the exact same design as the LS460 you see behind us, the GX, the LX570. It's really simple setup, but the block here has a few things that are interesting. This block does not have some fancy coating on the liners and all this fragile stuff the Germans love to use and it always blows up after the second lap on the track. This uses actually nothing exclusive to this car and this is the best part. Toyota blocks use something called a spinny or spiny liner. So what that means is it's actually all one piece. The liner is mechanically infused into the block. You can't service it can't pull it out. It's not really something of that nature. The cool thing about this type of liner in a car like this, it can really take a beating. I mean, you take this on the track and really beat it day after day after day, high RPM, high miles, high heat, doesn't matter. Two things destroy this block in a matter of seconds. Run it out of oil or run it with poor maintenance where the piston ring sees and they will chew up that beautiful block that otherwise would easily last 200,000 miles even with hard use. But something that they did to this specific engine that is meant to protect that block. So in your LX570 or your GX460, you're hardly going to take very, very sharp corners at very high speed on the track. You would end up tumbling a little bit. In this, however, you can. So we talked about oil pressure loss or low oil level. Well, if you take a very sharp turn in this engine, all the oil will just pull to one side or another and you will momentarily have loss of oil pressure. So what they did here, is very clever. There is a normal standard, basically LX570 style oil pump. It sits at the nose of the crank, part of the front timing cover. There is nothing exclusive about it. Just a good old reliable, oil pump. But in addition to that, this has a belt-driven scavenger oil pump. 
which keeps oil pressure at all times to help that little LX4570 oil pump keep oil pressure at high speed cornering. Very, very cool stuff here. I mean, any German manufacturer would say, ah, we don't need that scavenger pump. It'll blow up, they're used to it, that's fine. Or when BMW puts those little liners and their engines are the high performance cars that are fragile. I have seen more pictures of scored cylinder blocks on BMWs than any other car there is. They love to do that. When have, was the last time you saw one of these? Other than lack of maintenance, extreme abuse, something not normal with scored cylinder blocks. You will hardly find those because this is engineered well. Not only engineered to take you down the track very fast and blow up at the finish line, this is meant to last. And this is one of the things that makes this engine just truly a last of its kind. Everybody's going turbocharging and who can put the smallest engine with the biggest power figure and the bigger turbo and the bigger supercharger. You got none of that here. This is raw, pure power. No gimmicks, no playing around. It's just proper engineering. This is beautiful. Now, a few interesting things about the engine bay here. With all the covers, it's hard to see this, but this engine actually has two air filters, one here, one there. It has two mass air flows, because two is better than one. One here, one there, very beautiful. It's some of the odd things, because usually when you see these in other series of cars, they only have one mass air flow, one air filter. This one has two. But there's one more thing, and this is kind of a, some people will see it as a gimmick, I don't, because when you hear how this car sounds, you know it is not a gimmick. When you've driven one of these, you know this is not a gimmick. There's actually an intake port that goes from the intake all the way inside the cabin to channel some of that intake air inside. Because in this car, we don't have fake sound that comes through the speakers and all that. No, this is actual intake sound that goes inside. And that is very beautiful. Let's take a tour underneath the Lexus LC, and there is a lot of Lexusness here, a lot of little stuff. So let's get started. First thing is, of course, this is all covered up, completely covered. You hardly can see anything, but there are a few Lexus touches here. First thing is, this is metal, not some fabric or plastic, and this is intentional. You're on the track, you run over something. This is easily going to rip your oil pan, rip everything out. So they made this metal to protect it. The other thing is serviceability. Most people look at this and it's like, oh my God, now my oil chain just became a small fortune. Actually, it does not because very clearly here, it says filter for bolts and your oil filter is right here. And another little cover right here, very, very clearly says oil, two more bolts, and your drain plug is right there. Actually, very, very simple. So there's really, you don't have to remove this whole conundrum. Probably a LX570 or a GX is a lot harder to do an oil change on than this. Having said that, let's start with the suspension. And the suspension is extremely interesting. I mean, would you look at this control arm, it's like a work of art, the design of it. Very, very cool suspension on this. Now, the overall design is similar to an LS, but it is, of course, completely different at the same time. Control arms are all completely and utterly aluminum. There's two control arms at the top. There's two control arms at the bottom. The only thing that is metal on this entire thing is your tie rod. This is metal and then your shock. Everything else is aluminum, even the sway bar link. It's pretty cool, pretty interesting. They did this for lightweight. Keep things on the lighter side, keep things on the functional side. Now, some people will have concerns over this not being strong enough. It's actually pretty strong. Unless you hit it, then they just shear in half and you replace them. But that's not normal operating conditions. But then we have to talk about the brakes. And if you look at the brakes, Initially, when you look at them, yeah, 
massive caliber, big brakes, yeah. But I want you to kind of listen to this information on these brakes. This is possibly the biggest caliper I've ever seen on any Lexus model. Possibly the LFA is uh, bigger or the same. But this is a six piston caliper. Six piston caliper on a Lexus. But more interesting than that, this rotor is not only a two piece. We're going to talk about that in a second. This is an almost 16 inch rotor. There are models today sold in the Toyota side that has wheels that are this big. This rotor is super interesting, very expensive to replace, but this is a two piece rotor. So the idea of the two piece rotors is they dissipate heat better than the single piece rotor. They put this on this and when you drive the LC, you can immediately tell that the brakes are like on or off. There's no fade, there's no like sponginess, nothing. You just press the brakes, it, it will come to a screeching halt in no time, thanks to these massive brakes. Very interesting, and the wheel is a massive wheel. It's a 21 inch wheel here. But something interesting about this wheel, you know, even in the most expensive Lexus models, the wheels will just say somebody else's brand, they're made by somebody else, and these are made by somebody else as well. But just to make it more exclusive, you can actually see the Lexus logo on the wheel. That is pretty cool that they custom designed these wheels and they asked for a logo on the wheel. But moving further from that, we have kind of an interesting choice here. We'll get to it in a second. We have more braces here. Of course, this is a sports car and this is a convertible one. It does need all the braces that it can get. But then we move to the 10 speed transmission. This transmission actually is kind of exclusive to this car. And there have been many, many revisions to this transmission. It's a little bit on the clunky side when you drive it like a normal human being, driving on a track, however, and this is where this shines. They kind of had to detune it a little bit because people complain it was too clunky. It shifts are weird when you're driving it normally. So over the years, there's been many, many revisions to this transmission, still clunky. That's just how it is. Unless you drive very hard, it's clunky. You just can't get both good driving, like on the street, normal speeds, and good track driving. You can't, you either or. So this is, leans more toward the aggressive side. But one thing about it is the transmission pan is plastic. And this is where things kind of get interesting. See, they made this for, for weight savings. You have two drain plug. This is a, of course, dipstick less transmission. One of them is the level check. One of them is the drain. Nothing exciting about that. But they did this to save weight, yet they made this giant behemoth metal cover. I mean, uh, personally, I would have loved to have this be metal, but it's plastic, has the fins to cool it down. That's, I guess, that's okay. But we move back from this to this massive support where the transmission mount is. I mean, this thing is enormous, folks. If you haven't seen this on other cars, it's usually half the size, both in thickness and width. This thing is massive. And the reason for that is it needs to, it's actually doubles as a body support and a transmission mount, and it's enormous. Then you have more supports. There's supports everywhere for because this is a convertible, you have all kinds of supports throughout the body. Then the exhaust kind of wraps around, comes in the middle, and it's actually an H pipe, as, or X pipe, as people like to call it. It actually conjoins over here, and it becomes one piece, then it splits again. Pretty cool design, and in where it connects is this massive brace. It's kind of an X brace on the body. It's just huge, and this big steel piece. Something interesting here, there's a little flap door, and behind the flap door, there's actually a fuel line. Perhaps this is to disconnect the fuel line or to get the bolt for the fuel tank strap. Equally, there is another one of these little hidden doors on this side as well. Same thing, fuel line and the bolt for the fuel tank strap. Very interesting. Moving further from that, we get to the differential, huge differential, cast iron body of the differential. This is not an all aluminum differential. And then the 
kind of the plate that seals it off it is aluminum and it does have fins to cool it down. That's a pretty cool design. And then you have more braces all over the place here. Then we look at the rear suspension, multi-link suspension, all aluminum except one arm. And this arm adjusts the toe. And this is where the LC has kind of a party trick. See, this model does not have the handling package. So you have an arm with an adjustment right here for the toe. But if you have the handling package, instead of this arm, you would have an entire steering rack right here. Because this car, you can actually buy it with rear wheel steering. Very, very cool. Just one more thing to add to this greatness over here. But this one doesn't have it, so that's why you have these two arms, and that's the only difference between the two. And then perhaps what really contributes to the roar of this V8 is these two little valves right here. If you look up here, there are two valves. And this is nothing exclusive. You've seen other manufacturers do this and all this stuff. So the idea of these valves are, when they're closed, the air will come in and will channel through the muffler, then come out the exhaust pipe. When they're open, it goes straight to the tailpipes. This is what makes this car louder or quieter. So now you kind of have both worlds. Very cool setup. I wish they would have a button to manually keep this on so you can wake up all your neighbors, but you actually do not have control over it. It just comes on automatically and but something more interesting, and it's a little kind of Easter egg hidden thing. If you look here, where the muffler, where the pipes actually come out, there's actually two pipes. One of them, furthest one, is when the valve is closed and you have a quiet mode, it comes out of here. But when it's open, the exhaust actually comes out of this pipe. You can't see it with the car on the ground. There's actually two pipes here. One for quiet, one for loud, and the same thing on the other side. You got one for quiet, one for loud. I just wish loud was always uh, the default option. Though we have neighbors, we might wanna keep it down. So the rear brakes are a four piston caliper. I mean, there are massive trucks with calipers smaller than this, but the LC has four piston rear calipers. Rotors are also massive. They are a single piece, directional. This is just over 14 inch rotors, which uh, if we go back a few decades there, there were a lot of Toyotas with wheels this size. However, there is something very interesting here, kind of an old school twist. They almost like this was an afterthought. The parking brake is not mounted on the caliper. Usually cars of this caliper will have a second caliper just for the parking brake, but Lexus did it the Lexus way. The parking brake is actually inside the rotor hat. And usually that means it's a mechanical parking brake, but it is actually electronic. So what they did here is they have a massive actuator, it's really hard to see, it's buried on top of the diff, that pulls the parking cables to engage the parking brake. So it is electronic, but it's mechanical at the same time. Very cool design, really they don't have issues. They've used that in a few models here and there, but kind of problem free and there's nothing really special about servicing the brakes because of that. So I guess that's the Lexus way of doing this. Talk about some odds and ends of the LC500. Some little things that you wouldn't notice until you've actually driven one or owned one. Probably some people that own them don't even know about the stuff we're going to talk about. The first thing is, this is the convertible model. Not my favorite model on the LC500 because it loses a little bit of its rigidity. And uh, typically I don't like convertible cars because too much has to happen for this car not to fold in half because the pillars really add a lot of rigidity to cars. And in a car like this, that kind of defeats the purpose of this car. But nonetheless, this is the last Lexus convertible model currently for sale as of 2022, 2023 model range. 
This is it. It's the only convertible you get. Some people like convertibles. I'm not one of them. However, the convertible top here is pretty interesting because we've reviewed an LC500 before and I've told you that the interior is basically a designer bag of an interior. Everything is leather. I mean, I mean, everything is leather. Even the inside of the roof, when it opens, is leather. But something cool about this convertible top, it is a hydraulic convertible top. It is not just motors that bring it up and that's it. And the second thing is, you can actually activate this convertible top up to 31 miles per hour. Pretty cool. You could be rolling, basically, operate the whole roof. Most cars, two, three miles an hour, and that's it. You basically want you to be stopped. This one, you can operate it, and it's a huge roof, and a lot happens. Let's demo the roof so you can actually see how it opens and closes, and we'll look at some of the mechanisms. We'll just open it halfway. So the convertible top buttons, or Operation HQ, lives right here. Typically, in the non-convertible model, this is just kind of a rest. But in the convertible model, this actually opens up and you have two buttons. One of them just raises the windows, sticks all the windows up. Pretty cool, in case you want to drive in a chilly day. And then the second one operates the roof. Let me close the roof and then we'll open it halfway and we'll look at the mechanism. Very, very cool. It is a little bit of a slow roof, but hey, it works. Let's open it halfway. Let's look at the convertible top. The first thing you notice with it being here, as a mechanic, and I'm gonna love this, the uh, strut nuts are very accessible. They're right in front of you, you can remove the strut like that. But additional to that, there's this giant brace that goes from strut tower to strut tower. I mean, this thing, it's massive and it's huge. And the cool thing is you actually have a little bit of space here, a little piece of dirt in it, a little bit of space here. When the roof is closed, you might be able to squeeze a thing or two. Not suggesting you do that, but it's pretty cool hiding space for stuff. When the roof opens, however, uh, it's gonna crush it and crush the roof, so try not to do that. Something else about this roof that is very interesting. This is a proper glass. This is not some plexiglass or some weird thing that's gonna turn yellow after a year or two of the sun. No, this is proper glass with a defogger. This is pretty cool. I mean, you look at the hallmark of the LC500, even the little stuff. This is not some cheap plastic that just sits here. This is leather, folks. This is pretty interesting. And then you look even the little seal here. This is lined in leather. This is pretty intense attention to detail. Even this little arm that swings up to cover the little opening here, this is covered in leather. This little, little surface here. I mean, the attention to detail and the little stuff here is monumental. This is something that you won't see in a lot of convertibles. And more stuff. You have another reinforcement bar actually across. And this is where the motor sits. This is where everything else sits. You have the, the anti-roll bar that pops up like an airbag in case the car flips over. This just pops up in case the roof is open and you're about to roll over. This protects the passengers. This is pretty, pretty well made. I mean, nobody will ever see this area. Nobody will ever stop a, a roof halfway and look at what's in here. Maybe except if you're a car care nut, which we are doing that. But even this is lined in this very beautiful materials, insulation, sound deadening, because this thing is actually, even being a convertible, it is a little louder than the non-convertible model, but it's still very, very neat. Then the seat situation. Technically, this is a four-seater car. 
has back seats. Although, I don't know who would put anybody or anything in here because these are literally non-usable seats unless, I don't know, we, we are a very small person. I am not really that tall. I wouldn't even, I'm not Doug DeMiro. We're not gonna try to sit in the back seat. But there are a few interesting things about the seat. See, mostly companies will get the leather to the edge and then the back of the seat, just, nah, just put the cheapest plastic we can find. Nobody will see it, especially in a seat where nobody's gonna sit behind. Not in the Lexus LC. This little strap that all its purpose in life is to hold the seat belt here. It is leather all the way around, even the inside. You can see where the leather is stitched here. This is just beautiful craftsmanship here. And then the back of the seat. Of course, if you own a Lexus LC, you could not be bothered to push the seat to punish somebody to sit in the back seat. So when you fold the seat, the seat actually whirs electronically to the front to uh, give you the illusion that this back seat is actually usable, which it is not, by the way. But then we look here. The back of the seat is entirely leather. This whole thing is leather. Even this little handle has aluminum and leather. And then we look at the center console part that nobody will see. This is all leather. Even this curve, even this, everything here is leather. And then you look at the carpet. I mean, I'm gonna pull this floor mat up. Just a little cute example of a floor mat. This is not your normal cheapo floor mat carpet. This is just thick, big carpet. And then you look at the carpet itself of the car. It's just this big, rich, thick carpet. There's just, you don't see this in cars anymore. Even high-end cars are dropping the thick carpet and just putting the cheapest carpet they can get. But then there is more stuff. Because this is the convertible model, this has the Lexus logo on the back of the seat, just in case you forgot what you are driving. But the more interesting part, and this is something I'm really trying to find what exactly it does. There is a vent in the, in the headrest here, and then in the front, let the seat just work back, in the front, there's a, another similar vent. This one, you can actually change the direction of it. Pretty interesting. Wondering if that's something to cool your back uh, passengers, if you can get them in there. I mean, they're gonna be cramped, at least you give them some fresh air. Very, very interesting. And then the biggest interesting thing, and this is not just the convertible part, this is the LC itself, the door handles. You know, they pop up, you open the door, pretty cool and interesting. But the cool thing is, if, you, if the battery ever dies, I mean, this is a car that somebody will keep in their garage, only drive it in the summer and whatnot. If the battery dies, how do you open it? How do you unlock it? Well, actually, if you look closer in here, you have a keyhole. Very hard to get a key in there, but nonetheless, there is a keyhole. But because this is a halo model of Lexus. There's not only a keyhole on the driver's side, there's one on the passenger side as well. Something that even your Corolla doesn't have anymore, only has one keyhole on the driver's side and that's it, because it's unnecessary. But not in the Lexus LC, you have both. And of course, this pop-up handle will have the Lexus logo on it, because why not? They went all out, I, I, the team that designed this car my hat goes off to them, but they spared no expense. They just went all out on this and they've truly outdone themselves. Let's go over to the back. And this is where things are interesting. First thing is this model does not have the optional wing. There's an option for a wing that retracts and comes up and all this fancy stuff. But more stuff. The camera is right here. Very interesting spot for it because this is a pretty low car. They needed to put it higher, put it down here. It's too low. But then more stuff. This taillight looks like a video game taillight or kind of a concept car taillight. This is actually one of the most over-engineered taillights just to have that exotic kind of mirror type look. This taillight uses multiple mirrors inside of it and the LEDs are positioned in a way that they reflect multiple times through the mirror, and that's how you get your taillight. 
pretty cool design. I love this tail light and I wish they never change it. It just looks correct. And the other thing is, and here's where the luxuousness starts. If you look at the parking sensors, they're a lot, a lot smaller than your average Lexus like parking sensors. You find them in all the other cars, they're huge, they're big, they're sticking out. Here they made them tiny, so they're not really intruding on the look of the car. And then another thing, there's a button right here that opens the trunk, which the trunk in the convertible is tiny, tiny. As a technician, I noticed the little things. It's almost like the team that designed this car is not the same team that designed any of the other cars. They're just special. This type of clips is what you're gonna see in modern cars. Much easier to assemble, just the standard. But when you go look at older cars, you're gonna see this style clip. Just a complete different style clip. Yet I see this clip everywhere in the LZ500. Almost like, this is like a blast from the past for me. Little stuff like that. But then you look inside the trunk, you have a giant wind deflector in case that little one over there is not good enough. You can put a bigger one in case uh, the wind is bothering your hair. There's a pretty big wind deflector that you can attach and it deflects wind, so you wouldn't mess up your hair as you're driving your LC. And one notable thing about this is, maybe this is the one part that was designed by a different team. I mean, you can hardly fit this in the trunk. I mean, I really have to basically fight it to get it in the trunk. So uh, not a great idea. But something more interesting. See, this car was built from the ground up to be a proper, proper sports car, and it is. The battery resides right here. And in addition to this enormous battery being here, there is a second battery. And the reason for that second battery is this car does not have a mechanical shifter. It has kind of a button type shifter. A, jo a common joke that really will make all LC owners upset it's the same as a Prius, and it is. It is the same exact shifter as a Prius, just more leather on it. So if you get in a situation where you can't get your car out of park, battery, main battery is dead, and guess what? We talked about the parking brake being the way it is. You can't even unlock the parking brake. There is an entire second battery that lives right here. In the non-convertible model, they're actually both in this side. That battery's sole purpose in life is to get you out of park and out of park and brake. Pretty cool and something not Lexus-like. This is when they thought about things. See, one of the biggest thing about models like the Prius that doesn't really have all this, when you're in park and the battery's dead and you can't turn the car on, that's it, you're stuck. You really, there's no safety release, there's nothing. In this, however, you do have a secondary battery. That is proper engineering right there. One more thing, the fuel door is electronic. In case that electronic motor fails in the convertible model, you have a little access hole here with a little handle that you pull to open that. But in the non-convertible model, those both releases for the trunk and the fuel door actually live right underneath this panel. Different than the convertible because you have a lot, the whole back is different, but in the non-convertible, that's where it would be. And something else about the inside of the LC500 that was probably over-engineered a little bit. So the glove box, there is no release for the glove box. It's not a manual glove box. There's a very nice aluminum button right here, which electronically unlocks the sample of a glove box. I mean, it's so small, but again, you don't need something very big. Of course, lined in this very nice material. But what happens when the battery dies. Things happen, right? Battery dies, you can't open your glove box to get something you really need. Well, they thought of that too. Over here, there's a little tiny door that you pop, put your key in here, and it pushes a button, and that unlocks your glove box. Even the littlest things they thought about in this car, which 
if you have never been inside one of these cars, I highly encourage you to because the attention to detail in this interior, to the build and fit and finish, everything is leather. Everything is covered in leather here. Even the stuff you can't see, even the sides of the seat, everything. And even the stuff that are plastic like this, it's just not a normal plastic you see in other Lexus models. This rich, high quality plastic, it is un believable the attention to detail here and some folks will say well this car is of course a hundred thousand dollars there's a lot of hundred thousand dollar cars that has plastic everywhere squeaking and rattling and just because the name of the star on the hood and the bmw logo and some fragile engine under the hood it cost a hundred thousand dollars this is is a work of art i love this car so bad I wish I could afford one at the moment because I would definitely be driving this every single day because it is an absolute masterpiece and that halo special model, the kind of the timeless model. I don't care about the CD player. I don't care that this screen is not touched. No, nobody cares about that stuff because who buys the LC buys it for its unbelievable attention to detail and very high level of build quality. So this is why the Lexus LC is just one of the top cars that Lexus makes. I mean, when you get past the price, and yes, some people will jump in the comments, I'd rather have an M5, I'd rather have this, I'd rather have that. And you know what? Be my guest. You can buy one of these fragile German cars that make a million gazillion horsepower. It can go around the Nürburgring in two and a half milliseconds. That's fine. This is a different class. This is a car that will kind of do multiple things very, very well. Very expensive. You pay for it. Of course, nothing is cheap in life. But this moves your emotions. I drive Toyotas. I love Toyotas and Lexuses probably can tell that by now but let's be honest most of their cars are meant for the masses they're mass transportation cars they don't move your emotions they're not highly exotic and, and just kind of strike you like that but this does that and more this has that split personality you can drive it very fast and it becomes this wild sports car that is loud and brash and just old school sports car but then you turn a few buttons to comfort mode, close the windows, and it just becomes this comfortable, quiet cruiser that you could literally drive across country very, very happily. There is not a lot of cars in this segment that does that, does these both things and does them very, very well. This is such a beautiful car. From every angle you look at this car, it is beautiful looks-wise, craftsmanship-wise, and just execution wise, it's just beautiful. From the moment you see it, you hear it, you sit in it, you drive it, you get out of it, it is an absolute pleasure. And I am so happy that Lexus just recently announced in 2023, they are making a few tweaks to the suspension, just like they have for every single year, according to them, I don't really feel it, but they didn't change anything. And this is already falling into the kind of the Lexus, we don't care about what people say, we're just gonna make the car and you're just gonna buy it because it is that good. Just like the LX, just like the GX, and now the LC joins that. Unfortunately, the LS kind of left that group. It tried to look too much like an S-Class or 7 Series, so in my book, it's kind of out of that. But this is definitely in that club. In the club where we don't care what people say, we're just gonna give you our absolute best and you're gonna end up buying it once you drive it because it is absolute beauty. This car took a lot from the LFA. And the LFA, a lot of people didn't understand it. It was an experiment. It was Lexus's way to show the world that we can make a supercar that will blow your mind, but they choose not to because nobody buys halo cars. That's the, the sad reality here. This doesn't sell in any numbers. One color and one trim of any other Lexus will outsell this thing in a ratio of what other models sell in one month, this thing will sell in a year. But just having it here is a testimony, makes people excited about the brand. And this 
cannot be better than this. I wish Lexus never changes this. Keep making small updates here and there, but don't ruin it because they have ruined a few models in the past, but they have not ruined this and they continue to keep it well. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.